potato. I don't know about anybody else, this. Now, I've discovered it's so much easier. I always seem to be carrying stuff here, there and everywhere. I don't know about you. So I now use a basket and everything goes up and down the stairs in my basket. Books, you know, charger cables, just stuff. And sometimes Betty's toys, that's her favourite at the moment, we're onto the tiny tennis balls. So the basket is essential. So it's not placed there with any rhyme or reason and, you know, I'm not setting a scene. It is just that's where I dumped it last. And anyway, it's a book video because I know a lot of you look forward to the book videos. So I'm going to share with you. I've got three. I've got two I've read and then I've got the one I'm currently reading. So the one that I read, um, I actually savoured it um, and towards the end... It felt as though it sort of came to the end quicker than I was ready for. So this is Lorna Sage, um, who was a great academic and taught a lot of literature and literacy. And But she's a beautiful writer and she wrote a book called Bad Blood, um, which was about her upbringing in Wales. Um, and it's just so exquisitely written and you live it with her and it's all about sort of being brought up with her grandparents in her life and her grandfather was a, a vicar but quite a badly behaved vicar it has to be said and the word bad blood comes from her grandmother sort of saying oh you've got bad blood like your granddad and actually it's something I remember my granny saying oh they've got oh bad blood bad blood that lot she was very judgmental um so that's the t where the title comes from but this is basically about Lorna's life and it takes you up to her going to university which of course in her day and age wasn't going to happen you know girls didn't go to university but not only that she'd married and had a child so both her and her husband were at university at the same time now she had got pregnant before they got married. So something else that was a big no-no. Um, I'm kind of starting at the end and working backwards. Um, but they did get married. They did the right thing and had their daughter, but went to university together. And again, a lot of things she achieved were just not the done thing. And she was almost breaking out of the mould, a mould that she never quite fitted anywhere. You know, even though her grandfather was the reverend, the vicar, he was a bit of a naughty chap, but she just never quite fitted with the certain girls at school, what was expected of her. She was most definitely very much a free spirit and very much, you know, led by how she felt rather than by propriety. You know, she was very emotional and, you know, she really felt things. And of course, she was, there was a certain way you behaved and that wasn't really Lorna's way. And it's just the most exquisite book, a book of, you know, her mother who clearly, you know, had ambitions to be something and never quite got there, who would pay off a little bit every week towards some new clothes and then wouldn't wear the new clothes for a long time. She'd sort of introduce them slowly. Um, a father who, you know, ran his business as best he could and a grandmother who basically loathed her life but loved the life that she had back in Wales and loved that comfort and security of her family in Wales and it's just the most exquisite story and it's proof that you don't have to have the sort of autobiography of somebody uber famous but you can have this beautiful story that is absolutely true and it still holds so much interest and the history of it and just the people in it when people were characters and you had the district nurse who took the eye of her grandfather in more ways than one um and i really enjoyed it but as i say it sort of seemed to get to her suddenly being pregnant in a time when women weren't pregnant out of wedlock so she's that and the innocence of getting pregnant and both her and her boyfriend not feeling that they'd actually done enough to have got her pregnant. So it's very sort of sweet and innocent. But you also feel s sad for her because you can sort of feel that she's not 
quite she's never quite you know fitting and she's almost fighting against it all the time but still trying to be who she really is and true to herself i really really um enjoyed it but i found it very emotional and i sort of felt sorry for her a lot of the time as well a, a good read now this one i haven't read anything by gwendolyn um riley and i can't remember why i got onto this at all but it's called my phantoms um it's only a, a little book but it's just divinely exquisite in every single way and again it's about family and it's about fitting into the world and not fitting and also it's a beautiful story about how we expect so much of adults don't we but we forget that they've not done it before so you kind of expect your parents to maybe be a certain way but actually they don't know because they've not done it before and this is absolutely this is through and through um parents who just are who they really are and aren't very good at it and children who come along and have to kind of negotiate who their parents are and maybe not like it and maybe not have the patience to deal with it and it's just an exquisite short but very graphic and very heart-wrenching story of life ultimately um and this is the story of helen grant who is kind of a mystery to her kids to be honest um the father does make an appearance and he's clearly to his daughters anyway quite obnoxious and full of himself and he's always he's quite argumentative and he's always sort of looking to pick at things and he's always got a story to tell and he clearly has quite an ego probably a bit narcissistic and he looks down on people and he's very judgmental because his daughters are reading and educated and he's not a very likable character and helen is the mother who is clearly struggling in life and doesn't appear to have sort of any opinion of her own and she sort of reacts when people normal conversation affects her and she feels people are getting at her and it's sort of seen from her daughter's perspective and it's looked at sort of how she comes across to her daughters um and then you get a snippet of herself you know she's married twice and she doesn't seem to really choose very well and she makes friends but she just she seems dissatisfied with the friends she has and nothing's ever straightforward and she's always searching for the perfect home and the perfect friend or the perfect partner and it's almost like she's always disappointed but then she'll go oh well never mind but she's got this dream always and ultimately like anybody in life you can't always have everything you want and Helen doesn't get that and it takes you right through to the end of her life and it's it's so sad but it's so realistic and it's a good lesson in that's life you know it isn't always straightforward and we don't always have what we'd like to have and it's not all laid out easily um but Gwendolyn Riley an exquisite writer I mean I'm I'm gonna look out for some of her other work because I've not been familiar with with her at all but this if this is anything to go by um yeah it sort of teaches you something as you go along and makes you glad for what you have because it's so easy in this day and age to go oh well i really wanted that and quite often people get it but actually that's not what life's about but it's also about being patient and also about watching that person and seeing that person for who they are um and that we do get dissatisfied and we're not maybe as patient with loved ones as we could be um but it's also interesting for her to her daughter to see it through her boyfriend's eyes and she kind of keeps her mother away from the boyfriend for a time she doesn't want helen to meet him because she finds her mother a very strange character um but a really it, it's a hard story but a, it, the writing is so beautiful that you can't help but being gripped and involved in it so i, I really enjoyed that and then a writer, an author that I love, and I loved her as a child, and I love her as an adult. And she, there's something about her writing. It's Penelope, 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 Lively. Um, 
and I'm not a short story fan. Um, and I've said it before, I do struggle with short stories because I love to sort of start a story and know I'm going to be in it for a time. But Penelope Lively, every story is an absolute pleasure. There are some that I am in, have enjoyed more than others, but her writing, she just has you there in the palm of her hand. And some of them are shorter than others, but you're gripped and they're worth it. It's like reading a full novel when you read her work. Um, I picked this up in a charity shop. I'd never heard of it. The Purple Swan Pen is just one of the stories. And it's actually a story about um, a mosaic that's found at um, Pompeii. But it's actually from the perspective of the real life Swan Pen and its experience running up to um, Vesuvius blowing and obviously the end of Pompeii as they knew it um, but some of the other stories are equally exquisite but I just love Penelope, I can't say it, Penelope Lively, um, Moon Tiger I read last year, recommend that and also I have The Ghost of Thomas Kemp which is a children's story but I thoroughly recommend you read it, again it's a ghost story, it got me hooked when I was a child and I reread it just because I love it so much but I'm really really enjoying it which is why I wanted to share it before I finished it because I'm sort of halfway through and I love it it's just a great read and for me to like short stories is a rare thing so those are the three loved Bad Blood by Lorna Sage Really loved Gwendolyn Riley and My Phantoms and The Purple Swamp Pen by Penelope Lively. Loving this. And I've got a whole pile of books. Um, I don't know if I can angle you round there. Look at that. All those. And that's my back scratcher, if you're wondering what that is. Oh, it's my back scratcher. It's essential. I need a back scratcher. But I have all these to go through. Not all of those, because some of those are Nora Ephron, which I just happen to have lurking. But I've got all of those to go through. So what's going to be next? Pick a number. Give me a number and that'll be the next book I read. I don't know if you can see the titles. If you can spot the titles, tell me what to read next. If you can't, give me a number from the pile, one to whatever, and that's the next on the list. And we've still got a sleepy potato. Look at this. Oh my goodness me. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care, everybody. Um, and I'll be back soon with something else on YouTube. Haven't forgotten you, you see.